This is Optimal Health Daily, Episode 31, Build Fitness with Mild Interval Training by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Health Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in health, fitness, and nutrition five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey, it's another Monday, and welcome back to Optima Health Daily, where I read to you for free. I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your narrator for all things health, including fitness, nutrition, stress management, and lots, lots more. This is just like Optimal Living Daily and Optimal Finance Daily, but here I'm focused on health and wellness blogs instead. Now, before I get into today's post, I have to share with you a story. This last week, for some reason, my cat got agitated with me, and I'm still not sure why. I was carrying him and putting him to bed like I normally do each night, and he decided he wanted to latch onto my hand with his teeth. I should say more accurately with his fangs. For those of you that don't know, cats have bacteria in their mouths and under their claws, and so if they bite you or scratch you and it pierces the skin, that's a potential problem. And sure enough, my cat latched onto me so hard, for whatever reason, it actually pierced my skin. And so that bacteria essentially got into my bloodstream. Now, this happened really late at night. And so I didn't want to go to the ER because I knew I'd be there all night. So I thought, okay, first thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to head into urgent care and get this taken care of. Right away, where he bit me on my hand, it started getting inflamed. So I knew this was a bad sign. So I went to the doctor in the morning and he said, yeah, it's a good thing you came to see me because by this afternoon, you would have been really, really sick. Basically, the bacteria gets into your bloodstream and causes what we call systemic inflammation. Basically, it attacks your body as a whole. And so he said, by this evening, you would have had night sweats. And then you would have gotten progressively more and more sick. So he put me on antibiotics. Those antibiotics are really powerful, and they made me feel pretty sick. So I was taking probiotics along with my antibiotics. It's been a rough week, to say the least. And now, what I like about this post today, I promise I'm getting to the point here, is that Steve's talking about building fitness. Just one week away from the gym, I could feel my body getting out of shape. When I went back into the gym as soon as I was feeling better, oh my gosh, I felt like I was out of shape all over again. And so what I actually did was use some of Steve's techniques that he described here. So you're soon gonna find out how this stuff really works. All right, so today's author, Steve Pavlina, has a super interesting story that you can check out on his site he actually removed himself from social media, saying that he would rather have a smile than a smiley. So he encourages readers who are near his home in Las Vegas or they're just visiting to go ahead and schedule and meet up with him at a local Starbucks. He does it for free just because he loves meeting people in person. And you can see him, visit him, get advice from him all for free if you're in the Las Vegas area again. So that's all available via his website, stevepavlina.com. All right, that's enough from me for now. Let's jump into his post and start optimizing your life. Build Fitness with Mild Interval Training by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. If you haven't exercised in a long time and have gotten out of shape, mild interval training is a good way to rebuild endurance and cardiovascular fitness without killing yourself. Let's say your exercise of choice is running. Maybe you can only manage to run a few minutes before your heart feels like it's about to explode out of your chest and you're forced to stop for fear of passing out. It's going to take you a while to build up to 30 minutes if you simply run your maximum each day and then stop. So instead of that, try running one minute, then walking one minute, repeating this cycle for as long as you can. You'll find that you can go much further without overtaxing your heart and muscles. Maybe you can even go 10 to 20 minutes your first time. If run one, walk one is too hard, try run one, walk two, or run two, walk three. Experiment to see what intervals work best for you. If your heart is still racing after the walking interval, increase the walking interval and or reduce the running interval. I recommend you aim for an initial interval that allows you to do the most amount of running in a 25 minute period. If you can only manage run one, walk four, that's fine. Take a week to experiment with different intervals if you need to, but find one that allows you to go 25 minutes total, even if it's run one, walk 24. You should be physically challenged, but not to the point of feeling nauseated or faint. 
Once you're able to go 25 minutes, gradually increase the running time and reduce the walking time. Aim to reach run one, walk one for 25 minutes for an initial goal. Be patient as it may take you a few weeks to get there if you're starting with a longer walking interval. Next, gradually increase the running period while keeping the walking period at one minute. Go from run one, walk one to run one minute 30, walk one. Then try run two, walk one. Keep extending your running intervals until you can manage run eight, walk one for 25 minutes. Now keep those intervals the same and gradually build your time from 25 minutes to 45 minutes. Don't worry about distance and don't be concerned if you run a little slower. Just put in the time. Aim to increase the total time by about 10% per week, which roughly averages out to adding about 30 seconds per day. Once you can do run eight, walk one for 45 minutes, you can switch to running continuously. You'll likely find you're able to do 25 minutes continuously without any trouble. After that, you can continue to increase the distance, build your speed, do harder forms of interval training, or just maintain your current routine. The advantage of this type of interval training is that you're still spending most of the time in your aerobic range, so your circulatory system will get the benefit of that conditioning. If you're out of shape, the running intervals will spike your heart rate quickly, and your heart rate will take a while to come back down. So even while you're walking, you'll still be mostly in the aerobic range. But you'll avoid burning out from having your heart rate get too high. Walking won't tire your muscles as much as running, so your legs won't give out as quickly, and you won't be quite as sore after your runs. You can adapt this idea to other aerobic exercises as well. For swimming, you can switch to a slower stroke or a glide. For bike riding, you can coast instead of pedaling hard. This technique is also useful for distance running. Some people run marathons in a pattern of run seven, walk one, or similar intervals, and they often find their finishing times are better versus when they run continuously. The brief walking periods slow you down in the early miles, but they make up for it in later miles by keeping your running muscles fresh. So you end up maintaining an even pace even through those last six miles where many people hit the wall. I once used a run seven, walk one pattern for a 13 mile training run and I finished in two hours, which was a good time for me. I felt I was running strong all the way without dragging at the end. Even if you're terribly out of shape, you can use mild interval training to rebuild your fitness to a healthy level without causing yourself tremendous pain and discomfort and it probably won't take that long. A typical marathon training program can take you from running three miles to running 26.2 miles in six months, and that requires much more time and effort than going from zero to three miles. You just listened to the post titled Build Fitness with Mild Interval Training by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Dr. Neil again here. So as I shared at the top of the show, Basically, I was out of the gym for the last week. I was on antibiotics. I wasn't feeling well at all. I did have one night of night sweats because my body was fighting off that bacterial infection my poor cat caused me. And so when I got back into the gym, oh my goodness, I could feel how difficult it was. And so I incorporated this higher intensity training. I would walk for a little while and then I would pick up the pace and jog or run for as long as I could. In my case, I knew I was comfortable doing that and then I would walk again. And just as Steve mentioned in his post, this got me back into shape really, really quickly. And now I'm almost back to where I was before. But again, this technique doesn't have to be used for those who are already fit. This is a great way, if you've been out of the game for a while, or if you're trying to get into shape, this is perfect. This is a perfect method to start using. In fact, when we think about the general fitness training principles outlined by many of the leading organizations like the American College of Sports Medicine, They say, if you want to build your cardiorespiratory fitness, your heart and lung and circulatory health, the best thing to do is to modify one of four things. The frequency, meaning how often you exercise, the intensity, which is what we talked about here, the time, go longer, which is also talked about here, and the type, meaning the type of exercises you do, which was also talked about here, walking versus running, for example. And so what's great about this technique is that it uses most of those training principles to improve your cardiorespiratory fitness, which is why I think this was a great post. Now, I wanted to mention something else before I end this podcast. In just three days, we're gonna be raffling off a book from The Minimalists to a random person on our mailing list. 
So if you want to be a part of that for free, you can enter your email address over at our website, oldpodcast.com, that's O-L-D podcast.com, or for a faster way to join, just text the word Batman, yes, the superhero Batman, to the number 44222. Plus, besides being entered into our drawings every month, you'll also get some spreadsheets from us to help you optimize your life. Now tomorrow, we'll be hearing from Ben Greenfield, the man and machine, so stay tuned for that, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.